Hey everybody, this is Rick and Pete here on Tuesday, Tech Tuesday, 3 o'clock, so thanks for joining us. Today we're going to be talking about TrueVision uh, again and the fiber. A couple of weeks ago we did the uh, OLT screen and today we're going to be doing the ONT screen, so we'll be right back. You get your lifeline in case something's not showing. Those yes, I do. Right yes, right. I do. I will have my lifeline going here. So, thanks for <laughs> <laughs> thanks for joining us. Because we always friend. have we always have technical problems when Pete's here. I don't know what it is. Yeah, we can do more. like a what's that game show where you can phone a friend? How to be a millionaire? Who wants to be a millionaire? Who wants to be a millionaire? Yeah, so yeah, I, can, I can phone a friend if we have technical issues, or you can chat. That's why I'm not a millionaire. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> thanks for joining us. So it, and chat is available. So if you're having a problem, just let us know. But if you have any questions or uh, comments about what you're going to see, especially if you're a TrueVision user. Um, today we're looking at uh, the fiber science, TrueVision fiber for fiber to the home kinds of uh, opportunities that you may have out there. I know a lot of you are using it for DOCSIS, but if you've got fiber devices out there and weren't aware or haven't thought about it, you can see your fiber devices in the same interface. Sure. It looks very similar. Single pane of glass. Yeah. Uh, as I mentioned, we did the uh, OLT screen a few weeks ago, which is similar to your CMTS screen where you can see the aggregated view of uh, all of the ONTs on the plant. And today we're going to take a little bit closer look at the ONT screen, which is similar to the cable modem diagnostic screen. So ready to go into that? Okay. Sure. Sure. All right. Let's, uh, actually, before I do this, I'm going to, we're going to, you can see the screen right here, but I wanted to show you a, a screenshot because we're looking at a device where we don't have a map or customer data for reasons that I didn't, I, I don't have a way to blur it live. So I'm looking at one that doesn't have that information. And then normally you would see up in the left-hand corner, you'd see a device picture too. So I was just going to show you what that would look like from just from a screenshot. So you can see the picture of the ONT like you would if this was a cable modem. And you can see a map uh, of where the device would be and the customer's information up there if this were a live device we're looking at. And then also, you can also draw on the map as you would uh, on the CM and or you the cable modem. around, hop to somebody, oh, this somebody else on the street has a problem. You can exactly, hop yeah. on there and view their details and go to their own T-screen. Yeah, so you can see here that um, you know, you've got the one red device and the others look okay. And you've got some filters up there up above the map. You can look at the status of the device, whether it's uh, in an alert stage or I think it might be just online and offline. I can't recall on this one. And then the vendor and then the model, if you want to filter that way. So but we'll go back to a live view here. Uh, and Pete, I'll let you kind of start off with what we're looking at. So again, it looks very similar to the cable modem diagnostic screen. It's just a different kind of device. It's fiber. Right. So last week, last, well, I guess it was two weeks ago, like you said, we talked about the OLT screen, which is a roll up of everything on the OLT, all the ONTs, mm -hmm. you know, down the line. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and there's a couple ways you can navigate to the screen. You can, you know, obviously come from the OLT screen. You could drill through, see, oh, this guy's got a problem and then click on the name or the or the serial or Mac or whatever shows mm -hmm. up on the screen and it'll take you to this screen where you can see in depth. Yeah. What you're looking at is one particular ONT device, right? Mm -hmm. um, other ways to navigate in there. Uh, you, so we have, you can see this, this device is on, you know, slot one, port one, identifier one. This happens to be a lab device. That's why it's so close, like 137 meters. Um, but you could, in theory, navigate by Mac if you're doing Docs is provisioning over GPON or EPON, depending on what it is, and it has a Mac. Mm -hmm. You can you could actually search for it by Mac. You could search for it by the serial number of the ONT or the identifier. This happens to be a one. There might be multiple ones, depending if it's on a different PON port or how you number it. Mm -hmm. uh, depends on the vendor. Uh, you know, like at, at Trans, they pre-number their stuff. Um, but and that's that's. Uh, let me pause there. So we're going to be supporting more and more. Um, Platforms but right now we support the Calyx E7, mm -hmm. which is what we're looking at here, right? Mm -hmm. Something like that. What else is it? The Atran the TA5000, okay. another popular one out there. Mm -hmm. And you know we're, we'll be adding other ones like uh, the 9500 series is coming, uh, Nokia, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Zone. It, we just keep adding more. We've got them all yeah. on the list to add more and more. Uh, all the features we added recently, we wanted to put all the features in and then plug in the devices mm -hmm. into those things. 
but you can search by any one of a number of things on uh, of things on here. This one has a MAC address, so you could have searched by MAC, mm -hmm. you could have searched by serial number, or you could have searched by ONT identifier. And obviously, if there's customer data associated with this, you could search by their name, address, phone number. Right, just like yeah. you would any other device, yeah. right? And then same thing, you'll see if they have multiple devices, you'll see them listed mm -hmm. in there, and you can hop to either one. So if they have, that's a good point, so if they have a ONT and a cable modem, will they both show up there? Mm -hmm. And yeah. a set-top box. Oh, set top box too. Yeah. You've got set top view. So, yeah. so again, one pane of glass, as Pete said, and you can switch back and forth just by clicking a link in that customer panel. I mean, I guess there's a scenario where they would have a cable modem and an ONT or. Yeah, yes. that's true. That would not be that unusual. I mean, that would be unusual, I guess. I guess it's possible. Yeah. Um, right. And it might be you have an account that's across multiple locations You might have okay. that you might be able to hop between because it keys on the subscriber ID. So if yeah. you have. Like maybe a business that has multiple locations, you could hop between the hmm, three. Okay. That's yeah. another thing that would happen. Yeah. All right, so what are we looking at? On the, on the ONT screen, we try to make it look a lot like the, mm -hmm. the cable modem screen so for people that are used to True Vision. Uh, you have your model, shelf slot port. Uh, if it had a registration ID, uh, you can either provision by serial number or registration ID. If it has it, it'll show it on here. Mm -hmm. What's the current version of software that they're on? The serial number, Mac. Uh, these are you know informational things about the device. Uh, from a troubleshooting diagnostic telemetry standpoint, you have a couple different things here. You've got the transmit level of the actual ONT. Uh, you have the receive level at the OLT. So you transmitted it so many dBm and it received it so many dBm. Mm -hmm. This device, uh, it's an older device, doesn't have doesn't report its receive level down there. But if a device has it, it would it would show up in okay. there. So this is uh, something that we, one of the test devices we have in the field. How far away is it? You know, is, is the is the attenuation of the signal because of distance or what? Uh, this one's in the lap, it's not far at all. Mm -hmm. This is 137 meters. I mean, yeah. that's like in the building. Yeah. Uh, and it's various states. They'll go green or red based on is it, is it enabled and operational? Is there some sub child information that tells me additional information about why it's not enabled? Uh, if the operational state you know, goes into dis system disabled because of some problem, it'll show up here and you'll get additional information uh, about what's going on. Are there any alarms on the device? Uh, they'll come up right here, you can click through and it'll list the alarms. This one happens to be clean, but it would pop up a window that would say like uh, low optical receive near end. Right? And, mm -hmm. But you'll, you'll see that right off the bat. Mm -hmm. you know. If, if it's having a problem. What's the uptime of the device? How long has this one's been online? Has it been online? Did they bounce it? Did they unplug it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I rebooted the modem before you called. Mm -hmm. you it's been online for eight days. Mm -hmm. Well, that's... I guess I rebooted my set-top box. <laughs> I, can, I can go up here and reset the device myself if I want. Yeah, okay. I have a device reset where I can bounce the device remotely. Uh, you know, and then we capture bit error, like errors that are on the device. There's down, up errors, jam errors, burst errors. Mm -hmm. And when did we last poll that? When did, what is this time from? So the last one we got was from, because we haven't refreshed screens, 2.47. If I refresh, I'll probably get 3 o'clock. Um, <clears throat> and any CPE info of the device, this is, a, this is a test device in the lab. There's nothing plugged into it. Mm -hmm. But if there was, you'd have CPE info. Usually it's their MAC address and IP will be down there. And you can ping that too. You can right? try, ping it if, it if it lets it through, right? Yeah. Uh, and so this is the optical signal I'm looking at right now. Well, has that been going on for a while? Like I've got this... Low receive levels that have been going on for a while. I can drill in, I can drill in here, and it will show me over time, 24 hours, seven days, 30 days, 90 days, the various metrics that we we capture: transmit level, receive mm -hmm. level. Like I said, he doesn't report receive. Mm -hmm. uh, is there any bit errors and whatnot? And you can you can even do it live if you want. You can click mm -hmm. it on live. It'll start polling every couple seconds and show you a live graph if you're working on it. Yeah. You just clean the fiber and you want to know. You can really see the difference on this on a cable plant because a lot of times things are. Flat line or straight, I guess. And yeah, this is and this is a lab. Yeah. So I mean, you're, oh, you're, you're 137 yeah. meters. It's in. It's like next to it. Yeah. I, I even sure. told him we had one that it was so hot. I was like, you're gonna burn the laser. You're gonna fry that device when you put some attenuation on there. They have mm -hmm. little attenuators you can put on. Mm -hmm. uh, but we did this. Yeah. You know, let me see if it made a liar out of me. Yeah. I see three o'clock. Mm -hmm. Came up three o'clock. Uh, <clears throat> So this is device information and performance metrics around errors and whatnot. Uh, then we break it up into various services that are on the device. It used to be very crowded with T1 info. We moved it off to another one. So if you do pseudo wired T1s, we have a separate tab for that. Yeah. Uh, but people, most 
folks are provisioning data, voice, and video, mm -hmm. right? Um, and if you do an IPTV, it'll also show up here in the data. Mm -hmm. uh, we do pick up all the ports on the device, the gig okay. ports. Yeah, and I want to say, I'm going to describe, because for some reason, when we do this, you can't see the selection box. So what we're looking at there that uh, you can't see is G1, we, you can see, then he's got G2, RG. So like if I click G2, yeah. the, the RG, there you go, RG, right? And that happens to be where the data service is, right? So if you know, you know and then you get your full bridge if, say, like you have whole home DVR okay. in the house. And each of these, we gather performance metrics for, yeah, I highlight everything. We gather performance metrics for all of them. Mm -hmm. uh, what's the usage? So Giggy one uh, it, I don't have anything plugged in, so it's showing, you know, nothing, nothing, nothing. Uh, but, you know, if I have some usage on there, just keep alive messages and whatnot, mm -hmm. talking back to the OLT, but we do track is it supposed to be up? And if it is, is it operational? It's green. Mm -hmm. We also will track the train speed and duplex. So if you have a data service on the device, right, and it, it's supposed to be plugged in and running, we'll flag it. And this happens to be a, a test one. And we'll show you what what bandwidth profile was associated uh, you know, with with the unit. This one, I just, it's called extreme. Mm -hmm. Some people might have gold, silver, bronze. You might even call it one gig, kind of mag. Mm -hmm. Um, and then what VLAN is it on? Uh, you know, pretty much these are kind of standard. Like you have a data VLAN, a voice VLAN, but I've seen some operators get really clever with this and they have all kinds of special VLANing and all kinds of other things they're doing that this helps show which VLAN they're on. Uh, and for any of these ports, you can drill in and see, this is what it was the last, you know, 24 hours. You could drill in and see the historical information you know, from multicast packets, mm -hmm. uh, unicast packets. Really what a lot of them are looking for is octets. This is, these are bytes. How many bytes of data was going on? How many upstream, downstream bytes of data? But you can see it 24, seven days, 30 days, 90 days mm -hmm. going back to see, you know, that it's, it, what's going on? What, mm -hmm. When did all this traffic happen? Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> And all these alerts that you're seeing here that are yellow, they'll bubble up to that OLT screen so you know there's mm -hmm. there's a problem. Like, see this one right here, for example. Hey, he's, he's got a, why is he, he only has a 10 meg half duplex. Those are problems if it was real, but it doesn't have a data service on it. Nothing's plugged in. Mm -hmm. That's kind of like the default. Mm -hmm. uh, so from a voice perspective, same thing. You have a drop down. You can pick which port you want to look at. Mm -hmm. uh, you can see it's... it's Call status idle is the phone on hook. Has it registered? This one isn't registered and it's failing registration. You can see the counts that it's failing to register because we turned on SIP service for this for some testing as a test device to test some new features we're doing. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't have an account. Okay. So it keeps trying to register with some, I put some bogus info and it keeps going back to the switch and saying, hey, I want to register. And it fails to register. So this would bubble up mm -hmm. to the OLT screen and say, hey, they have service. You turn it on, but it's not, you know, not registering. Mm -hmm. And it shows you your IP, how many registration attempts and rejects they have. It was never granted a registration. How many calls have they made to me? Nine one one. Just basic stats to see if the phone the device is working. Mm -hmm. um, and it would obviously yellow, green good, yellow bad. Yeah. Uh, from a video perspective, you have this device has one RF port, one video port. It's enabled. Everything's great. It's you know, it's up and running. Uh, if it if it were operational but not running, you'd get you'd get a red flag here. Mm -hmm. And then your AVO is your return path. So you can have signal going down to the, the say the set top box or whatever, but you may or may not want return path depending uh, if you use that. You might not want to pump interference from what is it like hot tubs and all kinds of stuff will interject. <laughs> not really. Yeah, huh. uh, signal back in there, but. Uh, some folks use that return path for diagnostics. So in fact, like our set-top view uses a return path for that. It's probably not safe to use your internet in the hot tub. <laughs> don't bring your laptop Definitely in Definitely don't make toast. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely don't plug it in if you're yeah. using your laptop. <laughs> yeah, and uh, and then you receive optical. I believe this is actually the downstream signal, but they, for some reason, calculate on the upstream port. But these are things that folks uh, know when they're, when they're working on stuff. Mm -hmm. And this one happens to be down. So of course you you know you get signal issues. Uh, 
so from from a real quick point of view, you can see am I having optical problems? Mm -hmm. Am I having errors? Is the data having a problem? <clears throat> you can switch ports. Mm -hmm. uh, this one's got the data series my problem. It's up, up, everything's green. Is my voice having a problem? Am I having any video issues issues with these folks? They can all see that. Uh, and drill through to the history. Um, one thing we added in this, the latest version was, mm -hmm. on the cable side, you have all this Wi-Fi management, right? And the device that we can control here, and you can change passwords and add SSIDs and enable radios and change channels and all that good stuff. And we're doing that through MIBs that are DOCSIS compatible yeah. MIBs, correct? Yeah, DOCSIS compatible MIBs that yeah. talk to the device, and you can sometimes see the password depending on if the device obfuscates it or not, yeah. or you could change it or turn on networks. There's all, you know, turn on WMM. There's all these things you can do in the cable world. Mm -hmm. Well, the OLTs themselves, if you log on the OLT, does not give you that capability. Mm -hmm. it, it doesn't. But we found a way to connect in. We proxied from TrueVision to the device mm -hmm. in the home so that you don't have to be in the home. And I can click, I can, you know, if it's enabled on the RG port, I can click on it. And what it'll do is it'll pop out a window mm -hmm. uh, to log me on, right? And normally it'll it'll prompt you with a, hey, what's your username and password? And we logged in a minute ago. So, yeah, yeah, we logged in. Um, and that's configurable by operator. Mm -hmm. um, there's some defaults that Calyx puts on there, but it's configurable by operator. And you log in. This device doesn't have that Wi-Fi, but if you know we did, there'd be a Wi-Fi mm -hmm. section here. But, I mean, what's great is I'm on the device – that would be in the home. You can see what's your upstream, downstream rate. You know, uh, you know what, what what devices are connected. If I had things, I would I would show up. They would show up in here, right? I would have Wi-Fi devices and Ethernet devices that I could look at. Like who's plugged in? Which ports are plugged in? Mm -hmm. Did plug it? So why does this matter? Ah, what's can you know? If I have special services like a uh, full bridge port that's associated with port four for whole home DVR. I want to see which one's plugged in. I can see it. I don't have to say, trace the cable back. Okay. What's it plugged into? Is a wiring mess on the floor? I can go mm -hmm. right into this device. Calyx provides it. Well, mm -hmm. you're able to do that without even going in the home. That's really nice. I'm seeing this as a really nice tool for a call center rep to be able to do these kinds of things, especially sometimes it's just management. It's like, you know, can you change my password or my SSID or can you do port forwarding for me. Yeah. You don't have to walk them through that. There's all kinds of stuff. And yeah. even if you're going to do a house call, you can go on and maybe look ahead of time at what your next house is to see what it is and get an idea of what you've got to do. Mm -hmm. You can look at it before you go there rather than go there and go, oh, man, they're in port four. It's supposed to be port three. Mm -hmm. right? And they can just yeah. move it over. Yeah. Um, and all the, you know, all, all the features that are, that are on the device, which is what you could use, right? And we were talking about earlier, I guess in theory in a device swap, you could back up to your, the, the technician could back up the config before they go on the home, mm -hmm. go on the home, restore the config from their PC right here because they can download it and get it from their device without okay. having to plug in anything. Oh, I got it. Okay. There's all kinds of things. You, yeah. you know, there's ping tests, trace route. You have access to the entire device. You can reboot the device. There's all kinds of stuff that's in here, right, mm -hmm. that you can do. Uh, so there you've got, it's almost like parental controls, time of yeah, they've got, serve. Yeah. You could... Stop your kids from using the internet during Tech Tuesday. Yeah, there you go. That's, <laughs> that's a good, good use case. Yeah. So, so we we have given the the operator the ability to go to a device mm -hmm. without being in the house. Yeah. Right. You can get to it remotely. You could get their password. You could help them configure. Oh yeah, the password is mm -hmm. you know some garbly goop gibberish. I don't remember my password. Mm -hmm. And then you could tell you that they call you up. The CSR could go and pull this up. Right. See the password. Tell them what the new device is rather than changing it and changing every device in the house to match. Yeah, right? so without this, a lot of times a service rep, you know, who's on the phone is, they've got, well, there's two options. One is they can try to walk the customer through this, you know, mm -hmm. say, okay, click here, or now you're looking at the screen, click Easy. there, yeah. or try to do some kind of remote con remote in, I guess. Yeah, I think... Or uh, roll a truck, which is what you never want to do. Yeah. A VP of uh, support that manages the support center, yeah. Jason. Yeah. He's done a couple videos. Yeah. When we rolled out the Wi-Fi stuff for cable modems, he mm -hmm. said, I want to kiss you. He's yeah. like, you just turn a 15-minute call into like 30 seconds for a lot of our calls, yeah. Yeah. which is great. And mm -hmm. so we wanted to bring that same mm -hmm. capability. Uh, it's not available on the OLT, but we have a way to get to the devices. And we're going to be expanding this into other platforms like AdTran has the cable. We've tested 
out on the T5000, mm-hmm. even with the the ones that aren't uh, proprietary. What is it? Uh, uh, I can't remember the IFO, Iphotonics. I forget how to, how to pronounce it. But there's an operator that has that, and we actually were able to connect. So that's some stuff that we'll be adding in the near future. Now, there are some, I think there's some Calyx devices where this doesn't work. Is that right? Is it a third platform? Yeah. So so what it is is they have to have a data service on the RG port, the residential gateway port, because that's where the IP is. So when they do when they do a gig E, if you do just, that's why this device was actually set up. If you do just data service on the gig E interface, uh, I believe it doesn't give me a way to IP into it. I can't I get to it to IP. It doesn't have a, like a layer three I address. And so that's what we're doing is we're connecting to it with layer 3D. So what you have to have is data service on your residential gateway. And the second it does it, it goes and detects and says, do any of the ports on here have an IP that mm-hmm. with a service that I can go connect to? And if it does, it enables a button. Otherwise, it's grayed out. So this actually isn't a residential gateway device. It's a 721, which is not traditionally considered a residential gateway, like an 854 and 844 mm-hmm. for Calyx. But they have an RG port that you can enable, and so what we did was we moved the data service onto this port, and then it it allows you to connect. Hmm. Okay. So, um, did you want to show the one that's got the Wi-Fi? Yeah, I mean, yeah, sure. Why not? Okay. If you want to obfuscate the screen for a second, I'll navigate away so that we can protect the innocent customer. Yeah. Give it a second. Uh, that last 721, it doesn't have. Uh, it didn't have. It doesn't have Wi-Fi. Oh, oh, I got a pop-up block in the pop-up. Yeah, hold on. Oh, we've allowed pop-ups. Hold on a second. You can click it again. It blocks the pop-up. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think we're probably good now. Hold on, let me log. You might have to log in. Oh, there you go. Okay. All right, let's go back to here. So on the last device, we didn't have Wi-Fi, but this one you do have wireless, mm-hmm. and you can see it has the two gigahertz and the five gigahertz. I don't want to click on the SSIDs; it'll expose the names. I don't want to click on security to expose the passwords. But you can go in there and there's drop downs of all the available uh, names and mm-hmm. whatnot of, of the networks in there. You can enable WMM, mm-hmm. uh, you can do WPS, you can enable WPS or do some advanced radio stuff. Uh, like I was saying before, they have a wireless section so you can see who's connected. Mm-hmm. Like you can see and their their levels and whatnot. Uh, you know, they're down this is just what you see in, in our cable world, right? is what's their downstream upstream data rate which device is it who's connected mm-hmm. you know how good of a signal it is so it helps for troubleshooting yeah so but uh i mean it's a pretty powerful screen mm-hmm. and then you could always click here to go back to high level mm-hmm. and see the olt screen i have a question from rick inger okay. um asking about uh i guess controlling the thresholds, and I believe that is something that's coming on this. Is that correct? Uh, on True Vision cable and modem side, we can adjust the metrics when things... Oh, uh, yeah, the alert, he's talking about the alert levels. Alerts, yeah. That's what I believe. Yeah, actually, that's in the works. We actually have a screen for that for these various optical levels. Uh, I have ways to do it behind the scenes. Actually, somebody on the last video asked. Uh, yeah, that's right. They asked after. And we went out, time. and I manually went underneath the hood and edited the levels for him to match what he liked better. Oh, okay. And so... We we'll actually have that in the works, on, and I don't know if it'll be this next release, but it'll definitely be by the one after that you'll have sliders for mm-hmm. optical level, transmit, yeah. receive, uh, the various things that are, you know, that are alerting for metric levels. Right? And what do we have them set to now? What we think the best or most? Yeah, it's kind of hard rates. because it, depending on the vendor, they're, right. they're, it's like, it feels like it's between here and here. But then if you go into the CMS, they alert when it's here. But if I put it there, then everything will never go red on the other one. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of hard to do it. So what we did is we came up with an idea that what we're going to do is on a per OLT basis, we'll have a default, like we have a default setting, but then each individual OLT will have an override that they can do. So if the default works for you and you want to just change the defaults and you have all the same vendor, then you can just make the defaults and it'll apply to everybody. But if you want to do it on a per... OLT basis, like maybe this one particular OLT you run differently than the others, mm-hmm. yeah. uh, and it has just different levels, and you want to have special ones. Yeah. Uh, we'll have that for the next uh, next release. Probably, I think it's the one after, just because uh, with all this fiber stuff, there's always some sticky snag that you have plans to get everything, and that was the next yeah. bit of stuff. Like we we have the screen; it's just the back end yeah. stuff to make it go yeah. isn't there yet. Yeah. So. So as you can see, there's a lot here, and uh, you know another 
thing about what we're doing here is we try to be equipment agnostic. So a lot of times if you've got Calix gear, you're looking at their EMS and you can only get certain information. If you're looking at Adtran, you've got whatever software they have. So here it doesn't matter the platform. We're trying to get the same type of information, put it in a format that looks very similar regardless of the equipment. Yeah, and, and I guess the challenge is, I mean, I love Calix gear. I love the Adtran gear. They have, their, their tools are great and they give it. But, you know, when I'm trying to go through and get down to where I want to go, it's sometimes it's a click and wait, click yeah. and wait here. Here I can put in, you know, a customer name or a serial number or whatever, mm -hmm. and boom, I've it's got right there. all yeah. the stuff right here without having to check on the various ports mm -hmm. and whatnot. Now, their alarms are great in the Calix world, but, you know, I don't know. I, I guess I'm bragging on myself, so I'll just stop there. I, yeah. I like that it all rolls up into the OLT screen. Yeah, we're trying to make it easier for those that are using the tool, and then also to make it something that can be used by different groups. You know, some people are going to be looking at this screen, some are going to be looking at the OLT screen. You can pull it up on your phone, it looks the same. Yeah, and if you want to transition from from cable to fiber, or you're doing greenfield in a new place mm -hmm. where maybe fiber works better for you there, yeah. or you've, you know, merged in with you know, another op operator, you've acquired another mm -hmm. territory. Maybe they have fiber, maybe you have cable, but all your people know right. cable. Uh, There's a way to add in fiber with the mm -hmm. same tool, mm -hmm. same look and feel, same pane of glass, yeah. uh, and without having to make any changes, right? Yeah. Yeah. And, and not having to swivel chair between tools. Uh, I imagine it's probably... I don't know. Maybe they do. Have, I haven't looked. If they have like an Android for all this management systems like CMS, you know, or, I don't know. Or don't, the AOE, or I don't know if the new can. stuff they have coming out. I, I'm, maybe. I mean, you know, everybody's webifying everything. So so often though, those tools are difficult. They're kind of difficult to use. And I guess in the EMS, you have things you can do in there that you don't necessarily want to give to. Um, yeah, your call center agent. Yeah, we talked about it. Back. It could be confusing. Yeah. I have all this information. I just want to see this customer. Where do I go? Yeah, what am I interested in? Right. I mean, they might not know that Bob Smith is on slot port. Mm -hmm. You know, GPON 1, ONT 5, they might not know that, but they can put in Bob Smith and see his address, pull it up, and that can go. Yeah. And then just link back to the, the high level mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. So. Awesome. So if you're a TrueVision user now for Doxus and you actually are rolling out fiber, or maybe you've already rolled it out, you might not be aware of this or hadn't thought about getting uh, TrueVision for fiber, um, just contact your business account manager or uh, send me an email or reply on the YouTube, uh, do the comment on the YouTube and we'll get you in touch with your business account manager. It's just a matter, matter of connecting it up, I guess, and then everything. Yeah, I mean, appears. it's really connectivity and then yeah. and we start doing it. Yeah. Oh, by the way. Shameless plugs for operators out there that maybe have MDUs or so say we don't have customer, they don't have billing integration, but mm -hmm. you had fiber yeah. and you've been using like the description fields and the subscriber ID fields in, in your Calyx or your AdTran mm -hmm. to track customers. So especially in MDUs, I almost forgot about this. We're adding in this next release, we're adding subscriber ID and description fields in the OLT section for voice and video. So say you have an MBE where you have a, a shared device where there's eight ports on it, mm -hmm. and we're doing this on our provisioning as well, where you can provision a device, and then each port is a sub-account that has a different customer on that mm -hmm. one device. Okay. So the device might be, you know, so-and-so apartment complex building A, mm -hmm. right? But it hangs, you know, unit one, unit two, unit three, however right. you break it up. Right. You might have eight ports on that. Well, who's on port three? Bob Smith's in, in apartment 5D, mm -hmm. you know, which port is in? And they've been populating subscriber ID and description to track that. Maybe subscriber ID is a billing account number, description maybe first name, last name, or some some combination. If you're populating that, in the next release, we're going to have that where you can show up. It'll show up in here nice. where we'll have that info. And I think what we're doing, because it's real estate issues, is we're going to have a little pop-out where you can... Uh, see the detailed info. Mm -hmm. So you can see a real high level. Number three, Bob Smith's having a problem. Got it. Oh, his port is down, right? Mm -hmm. Or same thing with voice. You can go into voice and see Bob Smith's phone, his mm -hmm. particular one. Mm -hmm. They kind of share an IP, but they're on a different port. Mm -hmm. So we're adding that in for folks to be able to see in those MDU environments or if they don't do integration with customer. Like this one doesn't have any customer info, mm -hmm. but he might, I could have put it in the description. In fact, I think these actually do have descriptions on it. We're just not showing it yet. It'll mm -hmm. be in the next release. And that'll be, you think, a week or two? Yeah, it's coming out. We, we've reached, 
it, we've reached the end of the month and that's kind of where our development cycle ends mm-hmm. and, and then we package up test and then roll out mm-hmm. and so we've got to do our builds and tests and everything and then roll out mm-hmm. okay so, so uh, if you're a true vision user you'll be getting an email about that there'll be a maintenance window and then we'll talk about what's new coming up so. sure is there any other questions or I don't think so. Uh, we got Rick covered there. And Rick's a good example over at Highlands Cable of somebody that's doing both. So he's got Doxis, and then they are doing the, the fiber on the greenfield. In fact, he and I did a Tech Tuesday back a few months ago uh, where he joined me remotely, and uh, he talked about his rolling out fiber there. So, again, a lot we see more cable operators doing this because, um, you know, fiber's gotten less and less expensive. Uh, you know, people are starting to get, you're starting to put, put fiber deep anyway in the cable plant. It's like, why not go all the way to the, the home if you can? And Greenfield makes sense for that. So, yeah, it's yeah. interesting and it's new to some people. And, yeah. Uh, always looking for ideas of what things could be helpful for people in the fiber world as mm-hmm. they do it. Yeah. So. Thanks, Susan. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, thank Susan you. Susan Dan and joining us as well. And, uh, Thanks again for everybody who is joining us. If you have any questions that we didn't, uh, maybe you're watching this recorded, just go ahead and drop a comment on the YouTube uh, comment section, and I'll get with Pete on that. That's most likely something he'll answer. <laughs> Rick, you know the answers. I know everything. Rick fakes it all. He's the guy in front of the curtain. No, the sales guys. No, no I'm the marketing guy. I try, to, I try my best to be as honest as I can about what we're offering here. So. Yeah. Um, thanks a lot for joining us. I'll be back uh, next week with another Tech Tuesday, and I will see you then. Bye-bye.